from the London Ukulele Project and I am so happy to have a Zoom room full of all the wonderful people who have contributed to our book, First Ukulele Project Pieces, First Ukulele Pieces. And hello to everybody watching on YouTube. Hello to our patrons that have joined us in the Zoom. We're so, so grateful to have you here. Uh, we're first going to hear from Paul Mansell, who is the brains behind this wonderful book. And he's going to play his piece, Simple Things. Hello everybody, it's great to be here at the uh, launch of First Ukulele Pieces. I just really wanted to thank everybody who's been involved with the book. First of all, obviously I wanted to thank all the artists who really generously gave pieces to the book. And I must say, you know, there's such a wide range of pieces that I, I think it's absolutely fantastic, the wide range that we've got of people from all over the world and all different pieces. Secondly, I wanted to thank Tara, who worked tirelessly on this wonderful project, the Ukulele Project. I know that she sat up till the very early hours of the morning posting all the books out and really, you know, she was so fundamental in the design of this book and, and, and everything and, and helping me keep going when, um, when parts of the book were getting quite frustrating, shall we say, but she was always so positive about it. I wanted to thank all the Patreons as well, and basically anybody who's purchased the book. I really hope that if you've purchased the book, A, you've got a book that you really enjoy. That, that's got to be the main thing. I want it to be an excellent book, and I, I really believe it is. Um, listen to that, know that you're doing something good, and you know, helping with the project to combat loneliness through this wonderful little instrument that we all have in common. The original idea was to do an album, not a book, actually. Um, I wanted to, the, I'd, I'd interviewed Tara on the ukulele sessions, and I'd said oh, I'd really like to do something to help raise funds, and initially we both said maybe an album would be good. But I, I didn't really think an album gave enough back to people. I wanted it to be something useful, and then, like, I don't have many great ideas, but the, the few that I do have come to me in the bath. And I was in the bath and I thought, wow, all these people that have been on the ukulele sessions, I wonder if they'd be happy to give pieces or even write specific pieces for the book. So I approached a, a few people, some people that I hold in very high regard, Colin, um, Colin Tribe, Tony Mizzen, um, Donald, Donald Bowstead, um, Sam Muir. And, you know, straight away they all came back and said, yeah, yeah, be happy to do that, which, you know, was so pleasing for me because once those people were on board, it really helped then to get other people on board as well. And, and every single person that has contributed has contributed a brilliant piece and a piece that I think fits in the book so, so well. Um, so what I, I'm going to quickly do, um, I'm just going to play my piece through and then I'm just going to give a couple of little tips on um, on how to play it well I'm going to say how to play it well let's let's hope that I do play it well um, so this is um, simple things Um, the knack to playing this piece really is trying to get it as legato as possible, trying to really get those notes to ring out. When you're playing it, and it's a good tip whenever you're doing finger picking pieces, trying to come across the strings at a slight angle. So you'll get a much nicer tone if you come across at an angle rather than 
straight up. It doesn't really come across on video, but there's a, quite a big difference between that and that. It's a lot thicker sound. Um, in the first section of the piece, the first nine bars, try and use middle, index, and thumb. Like that, okay? Now the piece is in 3-4. Three, 3-4 four. Three, four music tends to have a slight pulse on the first beat. So as you're doing the first note of each bar, just make it a little bit louder. Okay? In the second section, you're going to use your annular finger, sometimes called the ring finger. Um, if you haven't used your annular finger much, it tends to be a little bit weak, but it, it's great exercise to sort of promote the strength in this finger. So as you get to bar 10, just try and use annular, middle, index. Again, you're putting that pulse on the first beat. You're also trying to bring out the melody. It's got a descending melody. And you want to hear that above the rhythmical part. So you want to hear that. So I'm almost putting two pulses into it there. The other thing that I do, you'll notice I move my hand about a little bit, because it's a fairly repetitive part piece. It's nice to have different tones in there. So when two bits are the same, for example, bars five, six, and seven, are the same as one, two, and three, I change the tone. And I do that simply by moving my hand back here. It's called ponticello, which means near the bridge. So as I play here, it's quite a soft sound. As I come back, it sounds more metallic-y. It just sort of gives it a different kind of sound. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm really looking forward to seeing the uh, other performers tonight as well. I'm probably at the moment watching myself because um, I, I've done this on video because I've got a bit of a dodgy internet connection where I am at the moment. So, But hopefully I'm watching this live as well. Thank you so much again to everybody uh, who's been involved with this. I really hope you enjoy the book and I hope you enjoy this evening as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Paul. That was lovely. And so, and thank you for your kind words. It's been an absolute joy working with you and to produce something that I think we were both really passionate to produce something that was going to be useful to students as well. So I've just had such a good time playing them with my students the last couple of days. And I hope, I think we felt that it was needed. There was something needed in the ukulele world that that students could work their way through. And then, so we only have, <clears throat> we only have three copies of the limited edition left, which is incredibly exciting. So we're so, so grateful. Um, so when you go onto the website now, you will see that the book has now been split into two. So we now have a book one and a book two. Um, and we just felt that that made it more affordable for students. So hopefully, ukulele teachers can encourage the students or their parents to go and buy a copy and then they can work their way through it, you know, as if, and and, and get that satisfaction of going on to the next one. <laughs> um, so what is the ukulele project? So the ukulele project is a not-for-profit. So I started um, in London, I live in London. So I started the London ukulele project at the end of 2018. We started with a mass busk at Waterloo Station and it was incredibly nerve wracking because I didn't know if anyone was going to turn up and <laughs> I thought maybe I'd just be there busking on my own but I had uh, 65 other ukulele players from all around London which was so exciting and then the year after we had 120 so um, unfortunately Covid ruined last year but hopefully we might do it again but it's the ukulele, it just showed it's such a good way of bringing people together. We have in the UK in 2017, um, Theresa May, the then Prime Minister, appointed a Minister for Loneliness 
because research has shown that um, loneliness has become a bigger issue and it's having an effect on everybody's health and also there's a stigma attached to loneliness um, and I think the pandemic has really helped to bring that to the forefront we've all experienced isolation when perhaps we hadn't before so what the ukulele projects aim is to bring people together using the ukulele and to combat loneliness so we aim to promote confidence and um, build communities so we hope that by doing so by going into schools for example that when they're at university which is can the 17 to 22 year olds are research has shown are the most lonely so if they were learning music at school we feel that they were more likely to join a music group or go to their local pub for a session or something like that if they've they've had access to it at an early age. Um, I am really lucky in London, I work with, I work in a school, but I also work um, for Age UK Richmond, which is a charity that supports people in older age. Um, we also, I <coughs> also run a class for Ottica Krauss Music Trust, um, working with children with autism and other learning difficulties. Um, and what's been really lovely about that, it's been very isolating for a lot of people, the pandemic, but we've been doing online sessions because some of the children are vulnerable still. And um, what's been lovely is so many of the parents have learnt as well. So we are very lucky and our profits, we donate ukuleles. So we are running a competition tonight during the live so I would love for you to have a guess and see if you can guess how many ukuleles we have donated. We're including our recent crowdfunder, how many ukuleles we have donated since the beginning. And the winner is going to win the 200th copy of the book, as well as <coughs> all our merch. So we've got some very um, silly mugs here with the cords on the back. You never need to go for your sheet again. We've got amazing tote bags. We've got ukulele chocolate. I mean, what's not to love? So um, it's going to be a bag of goodies. And um, all you have to do is guess in the chat on the YouTube live. And if you're in the Zoom room, patrons can also have a guess. Um, and just put in the chat, how many ukuleles have we donated since we started in 2018? At the beginning of 2020, I realised that I was running a, a not-for-profit that whose aim was to combat loneliness. And I realised that doing it on my own <laughs> was pretty silly because it was very lonely and isolating. So I was incredibly lucky to... Um, be able to find someone else that was had similar ideas and wanted similar aims. And she is lovely Sarah, who has founded the Scotland Ukulele Project. And we're going to hear from her shortly. Before we hear from Sarah, we're going to go all the way to Australia. Because we have three incredibly dedicated <laughs> ukulele ladies who have got up at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, I think it is. Um, and that is Morgana and Kathy and Sally. And I don't know if you want to come and say hello, whether we can spotlight you. Yay, so this is Sally Carter, Kathy Wellsford. And we've got Morgana coming home. I'm here. And Morgana's here. <laughs> hello, Morgana. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for your beautiful pieces and for being here um, all the way from Australia. Um, Morgana, you were telling us a story about um, what was your inspiration for your beautiful piece? So my, my inspiration for my piece, wombats are an Australian animal and they look really adorable and they're lay, they look cuddly and furry, but they've actually got really nasty claws and can be quite aggressive. And I know that sometimes 
when we're angry and we're feeling hurt, we can lash out, even though we're generally cuddly people. So that was my inspiration that, you know, if you're lonely and you feel like you want to lash out, just remember that, you know, inside you're a cuddly animal and just try and look after yourself. So that was basically my inspiration. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. And Sally, what was your inspiration? I have to say, I haven't mentioned this yet. When when I asked, when we asked the artists, we did ask them to um, reflect the seven emotions. What was your inspiration, oh. Sally? Yeah, my inspiration was, I thought, well, you know, the ukulele is such a beautiful instrument that it was very tempted to go down the peaceful, beautiful sort of, you know, <clears throat> happy sort of avenue. And I thought, well, actually, you know, by the definition of lonely, you know, you can experience anger. I certainly know myself, I've experienced a lot of, you know, I've gone through all the emotions with all the lockdowns we've been having and anger has certainly been one of them. And um, and so I, that's why I wrote um, Flames of Wrath, because I thought, you know, that if I'm experiencing anger at the situation, then certainly other people will be as well. Um, you know, it, it's, it's an emotion, so yeah let, let's let's bring it out there <laughs> yeah definitely thank you so much and kathy kathy's been amazing kathy ordered a huge amount of books that hopefully are on their way to then not not here yet but there's many people who yeah i could download for this amount of money but i want the actual book in my hand which <laughs> yes. is going to cost them 50 australian dollars actually when it's all told to get it um my piece which is get the job done um I was doing house renovations or house improvements at the time and so I there's a whole lot of emotions you experience when you're doing that and uh, first of all you know gather I was going to do my video with all the tools behind me but uh, it didn't work out that way um, so uh, yeah getting all the tools together looking at the problems oh coming across oh that's not going to fit there what am I going to do which tool will I use and then the second section is all about well I did it, didn't I? I've got it and it's, I feel very proud that I've got this job done. And then the final section is, well, who am I going to tell? I've got to tell someone. I've got to be really proud. And so I'm going to tell them about the, the journey and then the um, how I overcame the problems, basically. So that was it. Oh, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. We are going to hear your pieces in your lovely recorded videos that you did for us and I'm so so grateful to all of you and I have to say Sally has some very very useful ensemble pieces in our resource as well that I have been using with my students and they're curious as to the names Dr Smith and the the cat <laughs> Dr Smith and the cats being one of them they're like ask Sally why is it called that um look I I was really sort of Going through sort of different, okay, like my dog's names, I've got Staffy, so Blue and White Dog, there's lots of different names associated with, yeah, well, I've got a cat, so I thought, okay, cat, having a, a, a tune with the name Cat in, and then I just, I remembered, you know, like Doctor, you know, there's Doctor Who, I don't really have Doctor Who, but oh, Doctor Smith and the Cats. That's brilliant. You know, it sort of bleeds a sense of, well, <laughs> what is that about? It just might promote people to actually wanting to actually learn the piece of music. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. What's so wonderful and, and what I just find amazing is that a group of people in Twickenham, England, are playing your pieces that you wrote all those miles away. Cool. And I'm just so grateful to all you ladies. Thank you so much. And we're going to hear your pieces now, which is very exciting. Thank you. Flames of Wrath.
Oh, some amazing pieces. I love those, those three. Thank you so much. And thank you again for joining the Zoom, ladies, at so early in the morning. <laughs> so next we're going to hear from David John Roche. David, are you, are you in the room? I'm in the room. You're in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, David. Thank you so much for joining us. Would you like to tell us your inspiration behind your piece, Bala? Is yeah. It, it's, it's a Spanish word, right? No. 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 <laughs> it's the name of a big lake in North Wales. Oh. Well, it's kind of the name of it. You know, they love they have different names for some of these things. But um, yeah, so Lake Bala is, is a big lake in North Wales. And um, I used to have to drive up, up to Bala with work. And um, the, I always went over this really huge mountain just before it. Uh, I want to say it was Snowdonia, but I don't actually know. So I'll say it's Snowdonia because that'll add a bit of, add a bit of depth and a bit of mystery. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was always, um, yeah, it was a long ride. And actually, it was, it was pretty scary and pretty isolated because there's some sheer drops on the roads that, um, you know, really freaked me out a bit. I'm a bit afraid of heights as well. But when you get down to Bala, it's all nice and nice and gentle and nice and clear and crisp. So this has that kind of uh, wide open, nice sort of evaporating sound that, that resembles the kind of openness and expansiveness of that particular part of North Wales. It's brilliant. Well, I, um, I love your piece. I was playing it with students yesterday. They loved it. It's very, very good. Would you like to play it for us now? Yes, I give it a go. I'm going to pull my camera forward a bit. Excellent. Okay, so here's Bala. There's a recording of that on online as well with even even crisper sound i'm sure <laughs> oh it was beautiful thank you so much uh, thank you for having me involved and um, yeah just really wonderful to be part of such a fantastic project oh thank you so much thank you um so before i said that i was running the london ukulele project and then that i was feeling quite isolated and alone myself and so i joined up with lovely Sarah. Sarah, are you here? Are you Hello. In? Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> Sarah is up in Glasgow and Sarah is now the founder of the Scotland Ukulele Project and she is going to tell us a little bit about herself and what she has been doing up in Glasgow. Yeah, so hello everybody. My name's Sarah or Ukulele Saz, some people know me as. Um, so I've been teaching ukulele for around seven years. I worked for a music school and this year took like a big leap of faith and jumped into full-time ukulele teaching, but I always wanted to do a little bit more. Um, for those of you who know who I am already, you'll know I'm a very passionate, enthusiastic person, all things ukulele, and I love like inspiring people and letting them know that music is such a, a good thing and it really helps bring us together, it makes us feel good. And then um, Tara came along one day out of nowhere on Instagram and was like, I like what you do. Let's chat. We had a chat. We spoke for hours and every week pretty much since we have like a two hour Zoom call on all the things that we love ukulele, how we want to help people. And Tara's been honestly amazing for me this year and getting things up and running. So, 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 so thankful for Tara and this crazy world that I've been introduced to this year. Um, so... Taking a bit of time to get up and running, but we run the, well, I run the Scotland Ukulele Project now up in Glasgow. Um, and I've had a few different ideas of how I've wanted to push things forward, but what's working right now and what I'm working with right now is the LGBT community. Um, I'm part of the LGBT community myself, um, and it's a community that's always kind of felt, it is a lonely community, and it's a community that often get 
forgotten about with things like this. So especially in lockdown, and I was uh, this was brought to my attention recently when I started doing my ukulele sessions. There was actually quite a lot of adults, middle-aged adults that um, that had suffered in lockdown because they were lonely. They didn't have their people. They didn't. They maybe didn't have the same families. They were alone. Um, and it just sparked this huge vision. So my new vision through the project for the Scotland Ukulele Project is to start like LGBT groups across the country. So hopefully we can raise more money, donate more ukuleles. Uh, I've been in touch with LGBT Youth Scotland. So hopefully we're going to get a few groups up and running in the country. So that's been super, super fun. Uh, and then I've also been working with an after school care group as well. So hopefully that will grow and grow and grow. But the ukulele empire in Scotland is just beginning and it's been very, very exciting. So, yes, I'm excited for things to come. Thanks. Yeah. And <clears throat> thank you so much, Sarah. You've been amazing, honestly. <laughs> and you'll see Saz on our YouTube videos and in the resource. And she's been a huge help in um, doing that. So when you if you want to become a patron, you can sign up to various tiers. We've got community tiers, teachers tiers, school tiers, and each song sheet comes with a video. So you'll see myself or Saz, or you might even see our other founders because <laughs> Saz and I started and then it has grown. And um, we will go on to our next founder very, very shortly. But we are going to say hello to Boris now. Hello, everyone. Hello. How is everyone doing? <laughs> Boris, thank you so much. You're very, very lovely to be here because I know you've had a very busy weekend of Zoom workshops. Yeah, it's been a bit busy, but uh, I'm very grateful to be here. So thank you for inviting me and thank you for, well, inviting me to your project. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a, a pleasure. Really and um, so will you tell us how you pronounce your surname so that I get it right? Oh, I'm not sure if that's going to help anyway, but uh, it's Mogilevsky. <laughs> Mogilevsky, very good. Boris it's Mogilevsky. Only Boris Ukulele. That's why <laughs> Boris I Ukulele. My, my Instagram name recently, because <laughs> I realized nobody can pronounce. <laughs> oh, so, Boris, what was your inspiration behind your piece? Uh, well, uh, I decided to call my piece uh, The Color of Joy because I see a very uh, clear, um, well, Commonality. How do you, how would you spell that in in, in English? Like common things between uh, colors and sounds. Yeah. There is even a kind of a science in music that uh, people tend to uh, reflect on sounds via colors and the other way around, so to say. So um, music evokes emotions, colors evoke emotions, and uh, I see a clear. A connection between those two. Sometimes you just close your eyes, you play a certain chord and you see a color. I cannot really ex explain how that happens because I don't know. <laughs> it just happens. And uh, so in this piece, I wanted to specifically try and target, well, like bring you towards the brighter colors or perhaps the colors that make us feel good. So kind of keeping it on the positive side rather than going into the dark area of the colors. <laughs> oh, well, it's a, it's a beautiful piece. Would you like to play it for us? Definitely, with pleasure. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> So beautiful. Thank you so much, Boris. And I tell everybody where you are. I'm from the Netherlands. I live in the Netherlands, but uh, I was born in Russia. I moved to Israel and now I'm in the Netherlands. Anyway, that's a long story short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for contributing the, to the book and for being here tonight. It's so nice to, to have a chat with you. So we're going to um, 
go on to Mark. Are you here? Mark Whitney? He may... Oh, would you like us to show, to say hello, Mark? And then hello, we'll... hello. I'm covered in cat at the moment. <laughs> covered in cat. She's covered in cat. She's very, very old. She's about 17. Um, she's lovely. And she's very insistent on sitting on me. There's usually um, in, she's the boss of the house. Does that make it very difficult for you to play your ukulele, I imagine? Especially when I can't remember the piece I wrote. Uh, I <laughs> we can play your video if you'd rather. The video would be much more reliable. There's a little bit in there about um, how to approach it. I would play it very straight first, so you get the hang of where your fingers go and the basic rhythms. And then it's called Willow's Bounce. Uh, it's named after one of our dogs. Um, and the idea is that uh, she's quite a bouncy character um, and she's full of happiness and joy um, and uh, is you know, just such a, a pleasure to have around, contrary to the noise she makes. Um, and the idea is that you bounce it. It's a blues. Blues was originally a dance form. Um, and I like the clash between the, between, um, the minor and major thirds. Uh, so that's what I've tried to put into this. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for being part of It's a process. pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. So, Sean, are we good to play the video? Where those bounds? First I'll play and then I'll do a little walkthrough. <laughs> Exactly the same, and the second time round you can finish it with just that. You can play this as fast as you like, as fast as you can, as slow as you like, so it's a blues. Something like that, or... So it can be as quick as you like or as slow as you like. That's right. There is no tempo marking on there. I suggest learning it one phrase at a time. So you would play. I'm using thumb and finger. between the two until this F chord here where it's index finger then I'm using thumb thumb index I'm trying to keep it to both you could through if you want to or you could use a finger the whole way through it doesn't matter anyway i hope you enjoy it have fun good luck oh he's so posh <laughs> oh it's wonderful mark thank you so much you're so, very welcome that brilliant video and uh, all the artists have um or most of them have done videos which you can find on our website so you don't need to be frantically <laughs> writing notes but on that on that note we did um i did deliberately leave some gaps so that you could write notes in your book because i think that's quite useful and you could always i think with it um people tend to not note their progress so um one of the things we're working on is a practice journal so that you can actually be very mindful of your progress because I don't know, you fellow teachers, what you wreck, but a lot of my students don't actually mark when they're improved because they're always trying to get better. 
So um, very much encouraging people to take the time to realise, oh, actually, I can do that now. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, Mark. That was absolutely brilliant. You're very welcome. Thank you. So um, next, we're going to hear from the founder of the Wales Ukulele Project. Putting Sean on the spot here. Yay. Hello, Sean. Hang on, clicking buttons. Hang on. <laughs> so Sean is also in charge of all the tech tonight. So a big thank you to Sean, because I would have no idea to do any of this. Um, so Sean has started the Wales Ukulele Project not that long ago. What's it been, like a couple of months or something? Yeah, August we started. Yeah, August. Yeah, August. In August. And um, Sean, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you're doing in Wales? Uh, well, currently in Wales, I'm sitting on a chair. Uh, <laughs> boom, boom, he's the comedian of the group. <laughs> well, I am going to big up what Sean said. Sean was doing amazing things during lockdown, offering Zoom sessions. Um, what I love about the projects is that we are all doing what we're passionate about and what we're very good at. And Sean is very good at zooming and <laughs> in wales it's obviously a lot more rural than it is in london so you're going to be offering you offer online classes don't you um yeah so we've got uh, zoom sessions on a tuesday um we normally have an hour session for beginners a uh, bit of informal type stuff where they come in ask questions we'll deal with it there and then it's not anything formal anything planned it's on the cuff sort of thing um, we've then got uh, a child's group, which we run for an hour. Um, so they're currently learning their skills, which is quite uh, interesting. Um, so uh, recently we've had a, a jam in our little town of Porthcawl, home of Elvis. Um, that's the biggest Elvis festival in the world. Amazing. Um, yeah, so we've had a big jam there, but 40 people turned up. Uh, and more of us to turn up for the next one. So we're aiming to get one sorted for Christmas in Cardiff. And Cardiff Council are on board, so things are rolling. Excellent. Well, it's just such a pleasure to work with you, and um, thank you for everything you're doing. And it's just um, amazing what you're doing already, and very exciting to see what you will do, continue to do in the future. Who knows? Yes. <laughs> So thank you so much, Sean. So we're now going to say hello to Elizabeth. Elizabeth Pfeiffer. Hello. Hello. Elizabeth, I'm rather embarrassed to ask you what your inspiration behind this song was, <laughs> because it's called Tara's song. <laughs> well, um, yeah, completely different Tara, obviously. Oh, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your other um, London friend. No, you, yeah, exactly, my other best friend, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> now um well you commissioned it so the title was um lent itself kind of um i my idea was to collect different ways to use your thumb and your middle finger p and m uh, and combine those in a piece that you can play mindfully and in a meditative way and just repeat bars if you want or um, just stay with one sound bit for a while until you move on. Um, that's the idea behind practicing it, but obviously I've put it into a, a certain form, if you will, but I'm quite open to interpretations. Well, you'll see that we didn't put um, very much, we didn't put tempos or very many instructions because we did want to allow people to interpret the pieces as they would like to. Would you like to play us? Your sure. Piece?
love it. Thank you so much. And it's been such a pleasure. I saw, was very lucky to see Elizabeth last week. Yeah, we've had a good time, haven't we? <laughs> we have had having me time. again. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, lovely. Um, we are going to now um, go to Heidi. Hello. Hello, Heidi. Oh, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to be here. How are you? Never better. Excellent. I, so, well, the one thing missing is my partner, Daniel, who's on another screen because he's out of state. But besides that, never But we better. can see him in the Zoom room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you both. Um, so Daniel and Heidi have been just unbelievable supporters of the ukulele project since its beginning. Um, they were the first artists. Oh, look at your mug. And we're matching. I've got one too. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers. <Ooh>. <laughs> it goes very nicely with your album. <laughs> um, so Heidi and Daniel came to stay with me and we um, did a whole, I mean, you. they worked so hard. I can't tell you. We did a children's festival. We did a, a, a night at the half moon in Putney. We did um, a workshop in a school, in a secondary school. We went to a primary school. Mm -hmm. We went to a special needs school. I mean, you must have been exhausted by the time you left. Actually, the opposite. It was invigorating. It oh. was just such a thrill to see all of the lives that you have managed to connect through the ukulele, Tara. And it was an amazing experience. Well, you were such an inspiration and you continue to be so, so I'm very very grateful and I'm so excited to hear your piece from the book well this is a piece that um, has a very educational feel to it because it connects a bunch of different things it's uh, it's basically an introduction to the pentatonic scale and it plays up and down the pentatonic scale it's very simple and it's made to be played very simply and easily and I always find that I remember music best if there are words that go along with it. So, uh, being pentatonic, having five, I thought it would fit really nicely. And also because pentatonic sounds so, it has a very Asian Japanese feel. Um, I, I wrote three short poems in the Japanese haiku form, which is five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables, about the moon. And I have to apologize to the uh, people in the Southern Hemisphere for the third verse, <laughs> it does, because it's opposite. <laughs> uh, there's a way that I was taught to determine whether the moon is waxing or waning by putting it in your hands. And you're right, if it fits into your right hand on the Northern Hemisphere, then it's waxing, and if it goes into your left, then it's waning. So, <laughs> this is the little piece. And it starts with a quote. Three lunar haiku to sing while you explore the pentatonic scale. sing and play <laughs> amazing thank you so much Heidi thank you Tara thank you for including us well thank you for everything you you continue to be ukulele project champions and I'm very very <laughs> grateful 
Um, so we have got, so we've introduced, so I'm the London Ukulele Project and we've introduced the Scotland Ukulele Project and we've introduced the Wales Ukulele Project. But we're really excited to announce that we now have another project, a brand new one. <laughs> and it's in South East, it's in the South East, so it's the South East Ukulele Project. And we're going to say hello to the founder, Justine. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello, Justine. Hi. It's so nice to see you. I'm so nervous. I've never done anything like this before. So don't be I'm you're among my sweaty palms, but they are very sweaty. Sorry. You're amongst friends. You're amongst <laughs> friends. So um, we met, didn't we, a year ago um, because you responded to a competition I think we ran about kindness. Yes and I nom and um, yeah I nominated um, a couple of children actually and they were super delighted. Um, my daughter won one of the won, won one of the ukuleles and then, then that's how we got in touch with each other. Um, so she was delighted, I was delighted and then we joined in your Christmas um, you did a Christmas song with everybody and we joined in that and we danced and sang along as well and and then somehow here I am. I mean yeah, I've somehow magic I, powers. Well somehow I've bullied you into starting your own <laughs> your I'm own not sure project. how that's happened, but yeah, so I'm absolutely delighted to be involved with this project. Tara, you're like a shining light. You've, you know, brought so much happiness to so many people and also enabling me to be able to do this project is, is an absolute honor and um so so yeah so shall i tell you a bit about what aims i'm looking to do yes that would be great so um so one of the things i want to start with first is um bringing the ukulele to people who wouldn't normally probably have the opportunity so for instance, adults with special needs. Um, I would love to start workshops with them. So that's one of my focus in the local area and also primary schools and um, care homes as well. And to new mums, which was one of Tara's ideas, but I think it's fantastic. It's quite a lonely time and um, if we, catch these new mums at the right time when the babies are still young enough to be portable then running a workshop um, where they can learn to play the ukulele and for themselves and the new babies it, you know it'd be fantastic so it's all early days at the moment hot off the press and yeah so that's 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 me and I I live in Windsor well sort of outside of Windsor in a little village but in between Reading and Windsor so it's quite a good area in the south um and that is that that is that well so Jesse we we've already um yeah touched on the the parent idea because it is very isolating and I was talking to my friend who had a baby just um a couple of weeks ago and she said, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but it, it's a bit like dating because you meet another mother in the playground and is, there's this awkward, should we exchange numbers or not? So what a, what a better, is there a better icebreaker than handing them a ukulele and saying, here you go. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I would have loved, I would have loved it. So yeah, it's great to have that opportunity and to have Tara and Sarah and Sean and all of the projects and it's just been amazing listening to all of you super ukuleleists play your pieces so i am in awe of all of, of all of you but um and i'm fairly new in playing the ukulele but you know i can still i'm close to remembering how it was to learn you know and i look back to where i was when i first started which was in lockdown about a year ago um and you know so long as i can bring people a donated ukulele so i'm raising funds for that now but a ukulele this amazing songbook and ha let them know how friendly all of you are um then i feel that you know people are you've got to start somewhere and you know and i'm yeah so that's where but we've I'm we've going. also um we've already donated a set of ukuleles to um lovely martin martin cooper martin eek as the ukulele world would know him as um 
So he's we donated six ukuleles. He's in your in your area, and he is um, doing classes in a hospice. So um, Justine will help get the sort of feedback and impact reports yep. from that. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Oh well, it's so lovely to work with you, and thank you so much for everything you've done so far. Thank you for having me, and um, yeah, back to you guys and listening to these amazing songs. Yeah, so we're going to go to Phil Dolman next. And just a reminder before we do that there is a competition to win the 200th book and a whole load of ukulele project goodies. We've got amazing, you know, tote bags and I know all sorts of things. Badges. The way to win this amazing prize is to put in the chat how many ukuleles do you think we've donated since the ukulele project started in 2018. So the person that gets nearest to the answer will win a handful of goodies. Is Phil still here? He sat very Hello. patiently. I'm here. Hi Phil! How Hello. are you? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for being part of this amazing project, it's this lovely, wonderful book. Yeah, it's just, it's so nice to, to open a book and, and occasionally when I was going through it the other day, just playing some of the tunes and you turn the page and go, oh, that's mine. Yes. <laughs> it's really nice feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we wouldn't have, you were, you know, we wouldn't have not had you in the book. It would have been very amiss. Um, would you like to tell us your inspiration? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, mine's called uh, Spring Surprise, and that's um, the kind of the emotion I was going for there was obviously surprise. And when I wrote this, it was, I think, May I was writing this, and so it was spring. And where I live, uh, I'm on the, the bottom of the Peak District in Derbyshire. And uh, at that time of year, everything just changes. So you go out one morning and you know things are one color and the next day they're a different color and i thought well that's quite nice um i've got a season in there and i've got the surprise of what's it going to look like this morning and on top of that of course uh, spring surprise uh, is a chocolate in a monty python sketch the trace descriptions act sketch so i thought i'd sneak that in as well why not and it all seemed to come together um yeah and i was just trying to capture the idea of um of things just growing and appearing and changing and at the same time, I sort of set myself a challenge when I was writing it that I would have no more than two notes sounding at any one time. And those two notes would be on adjacent strings, um, apart from the last chord, which I thought I'll let myself have a chord at the end. But everything else is two notes at a time maximum. And those those two notes always happen on adjacent strings. So hopefully you can play the whole thing, if you like, with a thumb and a finger or with with two fingers or whatever suits you or even strum them with your thumb brilliant would you like to play us the piece i'll have a go yeah if i can read my tablature here we go <laughs> it's beautiful thank you so much phil thank you well um i think that you'll be we we have got another project in the pipeline and it's in your area so oh, excellent yes i think you will be hopefully we can do lots of things together yeah keep me in the loop do yes definitely thank you so much phil my pleasure thank you very much i'm just going to sit here and listen to lots more lovely stuff <laughs> yeah. So, oh, Sam, yeah, you have been sitting very, very patiently. Are you still here, Sam? Because you've been here since the beginning. Yay! Oh, I'm here. Just trying to oh, unmute myself. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, thank you so much. You've been so patiently waiting for your turn. Yeah, thanks for having me. 
Oh, well, thank you so much for um, contributing to the book and being part of this project. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's really great to be a part of this project. I think it's such a, such a nice project and so hopefully useful for for students and, and all players, really, because it's such a great collection of pieces and so diverse. Yes, I think, isn't it so wonderful, you, yeah, that everyone's is different and unique in their own way. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind your piece? Yeah, OK, so my piece is called Stomp. And I, I guess I really just thought about um, what would I want to play when I was, uh, well, learning the guitar when I was younger. Um, and I would want something that was rhythmical uh, and fun to play. And so that was the main inspiration behind it. Um, I also like moving my thumb from um, the fourth string to the third string. So that technique happens quite a lot. And then in one section, the melody is on the, the fourth string, the G string, and and just moves up and down that string. Um, so I think that's a good use of the, the re-entrant G. Um, that's about it, really. It's just a, a fun piece, and I called it Stomp because it's quite, quite rhythmical. I'll just tilt that down a bit so you can see. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Well, it's a pleasure. Thanks for oh, having well, me. It's um, just such a beautiful piece. And thank you so much for being involved in thank this you. project. So that's it. That's all, folks, for the live. Um, thank you so much to everybody, all the artists that have come and played their pieces live and to all those that are at home and have um, contributed to the book. Like I said, we only have a few copies of the limited edition available. And then from now on, you can buy it as a book one and a book two. Um, and you can download it as a PDF. And there's also lots of other ways that you can support the ukulele and to support us and help us in combating loneliness one ukulele at a time. So um, all the information on how to do that is on our website, www.ukuleleproject.co.uk and are there any guesses I'm going to have to consult my phone to see if anyone's guessed whether how many ukuleles have we donated so far so I'll just wait to hear from lovely Anna who is on the YouTube live I think there might be a delay so we might be <laughs> here for a little while but um Yes, I just want to thank everybody once again for coming and all the artists. Oh, no one guessed. Oh, Trisha guessed. It's almost, not quite 634. Um, unfortunately, it's 410. So we have donated 410 ukuleles since 2018. Oh, are there loads of guesses? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Anita Stevens is the closest. So Anita, please, 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 um, can you send me an email, Project at gmail.com with your address and I will send you your prize. So yes, we have donated 410 ukuleles to, um, I think it's 12 schools and six community groups a hospital, a hospice, and a special needs school. I think that's it. <laughs> so we hope to continue doing that. 
and um, with your help and support we can continue to donate and to continue to bring people together and on that note I want to say a huge huge thank you to all our patrons that support us with a monthly donation which gives them access to our resource we're going to have a little um, sing along after this live to all the artists thank you so so much um, and to all my fellow ukulele project founders um, it's just such a delight to work with you all and I can't wait to yeah do this again another time so that we can share what we have done with your very kind donations and support so thank you so much huge thank you to paul mansell for putting this all together and to all the art and yeah go buy the book it's launched whoopee